got some cool stuff. Can you handle it? Where are we going? We're gonna go see some missiles. They're like rockets. Well. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> You ready to go see some missiles? Yes, I go in here and see me. They kept a lot of missiles out here, especially during uh, the standoff with Russia and the Soviet Union. This was during the Cold War. Yeah, this was used a lot during yeah, that. Over a thousand missiles were here. The they worked moves. around the clock. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day monitoring these missiles for like 30 years. So they're called Minutemen because they need to be able to launch uh, counterattacks or attacks of uh, nuclear warheads on like a moment's notice, especially with Russia. Oh no, it's gonna happen. No, it'll be okay. It's just, it's a TV, it's not real. People did have real stuff like that going it's on. It'd be scary. Buttons. That'd be scary, wouldn't it? shells to crawl into like Bert the turtle, so we have to cover up in our own way. First, you duck, and then you cover. And very tightly, you cover the back of your neck and your face. Here's Tony going to his Cub Scout meeting. Tony knows the bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night. He is ready for it. Duck and cover. Tony knows that it helps to get to any kind of cover. It's a, It'd be a scary time to live. This family knows what to do, just as your own family should. So that's the chair you would sit in, or they sat in, when they would talk to the president, and then within five minutes they'd make the decision whether or not they wanted to turn the key at the same time that would set off the nuclear warheads. And that's what that's saying, like, would you be able to turn that key to do something like that? where they actually housed one of the missiles that the Minutemen could uh, launch toward Russia if they needed to. Um, pretty crazy. This was back in the day. This was super high security, shoot to kill on site, motion sensors, the whole deal around this thing right here. But now it's just in the middle of a cow pasture. <laughs> That's actually what the sign was coming in. It said relock this so the cows don't get in. You can take tours here, which is super cool. But it's a small area because it was only meant for a few people to come and know be underground so in order to take the tour there's only six people to, per tour so it's really difficult to get in but this is where you would come and they even take you down to the control center here Never seen a missile before, have you? No, I have not. I didn't even know about all this. That's crazy. So I actually have a friend who knows someone here that grew up when all this was going on. And he remembered them teaching him, you know, to duck and cover and go under a desk, which, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, they didn't even, he's, and he's grown up now, and when he come and visited, he didn't even really know what was going on then, so. I don't know, and it's crazy that these people went to work here for 30 years guarding that missile. It's just, that's crazy to me. So there's a nice smooth path over here for some other trail. <laughs> the one we're taking, Notch Trail, looks like this. So this trail is a mile and a half round trip, but it said it's gonna take up to two hours. So 
pretty sure there's something Marissa's not telling me. Because I can do the math. Usually a mile and a half does not take two hours. There might be a ladder we climb. Might be a ladder. Ladder, ladders. I think one. Okay, all right, one ladder. Doesn't sound too bad. Everywhere we go is so different. The terrain here is just, I don't know if this stuff is sandstone or what this is made out of, but it's beautiful. I'm sure they appreciate our kid. <laughs> Yelling run, run the whole time. Run, Daddy. All right, all right, let's go. Run, Daddy. I'm running, I'm right behind you. You better keep up. did it, high five. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful, check that out. You hiked the whole way. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's all this. It's like you're just, um, you know, you're back in all this and you don't see anything. Do this. And then you get out here and then it's like, Do wow, this. bam. Seeing all this. Do what? That? <laughs> Ready? This is pretty amazing. Super windy, but this is beautiful. Hey, talking southern is more efficient. That that's a faster way to say it. The yellow mouse. He wants to hug the dinosaur. He likes me. Go hug the dinosaur. What do you want to hug? A uh, tail. You want to hug the dinosaur tail? So Hensley has seen this dinosaur a few times as we have passed by on the interstate and she has asked to come hug its tail so we thought you know what why not let's pull over and go hug the dinosaur tail. <laughs> Are you hugging his tail? If you're too busy to pull over and ride a dinosaur tail then you're just too busy that's my philosophy in life. <laughs> Hensley's never too busy. <laughs> So it's our last night in this spot. Uh, we've really loved it here. Uh, got a constant breeze, which we have going on right now. <laughs> An amazing view. And it has not been crowded at all. If you're wondering like, our fear sometimes you're like driving way out of your way to get to a boondocking spot and then you show up and there's like nowhere to park. I mean, which that happens in RV parks, but boondocking wise, uh, if it's like an open area, like where we're at right now, I mean, I don't know, I can't see how this would fill up, right? I mean, yeah, it'd be tough. It's like, just get on Google Maps, do Earth View, and you can see if it's like sort of an open area to park. It's us, and there's a Tiffin Class A here, and that's it. I mean, there's nobody anywhere. I mean, and this thing goes pretty far that way, and it goes that way. So, awesome area. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of fun. Time to uh, move on and check out some more stuff. Yeah, so we'll, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is somewhere new. Well, catch you guys later. He's back. You're a happy dog, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh.